I want to take a look at some Niagara stuff. Niagara and the Significance Manager and the just the system of how to use scalability in Niagara. It's something that I tried looking into myself, but I kind of just had to dig in. It's nothing too complex, uh, but I couldn't find too much on it. So I thought I'd make a little video. So let's take a look. Enable it on this, which is the bubbles. Uh, so first things first, uh, there's a couple things to look at. Uh, overall, you can uh, use this tab if you want to kind of see your see what your costs are overall uh, for your Niagara particles. Um, but then there is this tab right here. This is specifically for the system uh, and not the emitter. Though you can set these same settings in the emitter, there's some trickiness to that. So that's partially what I wanted to cover. There's then this here, so scalability. And by default, you have to override the settings if you want to set anything in here. And then that's how you would set uh, your distance settings, your uh, calling all these effects for this system. And this is what threw me off, is the reason why it's override is we have this right here that's just called effect type. Uh, and I feel like this is a bad name, but I understand why it's named this. So for here, we need to uh, create an effect type. I already have one created for this area. Um, but basically, you're going to, the way Niagara is set up, if you want to use the effect types, you would set one up for each type of effect. So say your one-shots, your environmental effects, your, you know, player effects. You'd break them all up so that you can have these different settings on them, the different calling, different the scalability on them. And then you can use this to change those how you see fit and kind of have like an equal, you know, everything that uses this environmental looping will have the same type of um, calling and stuff on it, uh, unless it's overwritten. And that's what I wanted to get to, is we can't override anything set here, but for it to work, we need an effect type, uh, which if you set this, you can then go into your emitters themselves um, and override them the same exact way. Um, and they enable you to override based on CVAR uh, engine commands. Uh, as well as, uh, you know, one by one uh, settings here. So let's actually click into this one. So this is my environmental looping. Um, from here, we get a couple options. Uh, we can change how often uh, these effects are checked. So you can have it where it's continuously checked. And this is where you're going to want more than one type, right? So like depending on the cost of the effects themselves, depending on, you know, the distance they need to be viewed by, or just the, the level of importance, you're going to change uh, when these spawn. Say, like this one, for instance, uh, there's an update frequency of spawn only. So what that means is we could check on spawn uh, what the system setting is. If the system setting is above medium then we spawn it right that's where we would set other settings like max instances and things like that if we needed to now under that update frequency we have this call reaction which is pretty straightforward and they do have um so basically you can have it where when it's called to just kill it uh and the instance will be deactivated um or you can just put it to sleep and then it will reactivate itself automatically when you're within that distance again. Uh, at the moment, I have this for a sleep, because obviously these, I mean, not obviously, but this mesh you will leave the distance of, which I don't think I set it based on distance, but I set it based on some other stuff, which we can test out. So max distance, let's set to 10. I'm on high settings. Um, so now that we're more than 10 away, it's not spawning. Let's get close to it. Let's go like a thousand. <laughs> Make it a little more obvious, but you can tell. And the update frequency, even though I have it on low, uh, it's still relatively fast. It's just not instant, right? So a lot of this is self-explanatory once you actually get in here and add. As you can see, I have settings per scalability type, and that's something that's really helpful here. Um, I currently only use it here, which is the actual emitter scalability settings. But then there's some other settings in here. So this is where we can set... Stuff like um, the max instances we want rendered. 
uh, actually, I forgot one thing, which is the significance handler. This changes how you want on update to consider the significance of articles. Like, remember I said, so like I'm currently doing by distance. That I had this limited to a certain number of instances. Uh, we can have it where it's going to update and change things based on the distance fat first, right? So that means like the close things are going to be can won't be called out, but the distance objects will be, or the older objects will be. Um, I was going to show off um, stuff like max time without render, but at the moment that crashes my engine uh, specifically with this. Uh, yeah, so uh, most of this stuff's based on just simple floats, you know, like max distance, uh, things like that. And because this is not set to sleep, uh, it would just reactivate those particles once we're within a thousand, right? So, like, that's one thing that I still want to set up for this, but I'm still setting them up in general for the types of particles I have. Okay, uh, I hope that helps out. I know it's nothing too complex, but I just wanted to make a video uh, showing... Showing it off a little bit because it's something that uh, even just leading someone to somewhere they can update these settings, it can hopefully help some people with their performance, uh, specifically with Niagara. And um, I know I didn't go in depth, uh, I think, um, as much as I could because I don't know a lot of like the um, commands. Like that's the one place I wish I did a little more on. Uh, maybe I'll do an update video to this once I learn some more. Uh, but I hope this helps. Uh, I know that. This was something that was bothering me. All right. Uh, well, I hope this helped. Um, hit that subscribe button if you liked the video and want to see more content.